So we've been through throwing basic cylinders and how to throw a bowl as well. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to throw a lid and make a little gallery for it to sit in at one piece of clay. So we're going to throw the lid first of all and then the jar for it to sit in. Uh, we're going to do what's called throwing off the hump and that's taking a large piece of clay and quite often you'll throw repetitive pieces off of the single piece. With this process we're just going to throw the little lid and then throw the vessel afterwards. So I've already got a piece of clay attached onto the wheel and I've coned it up but I'm going to centre it down and cone it up just once just to make it pretty centred on the wheel. So centering down as before and when you're going to comb back up again, you're centred down, just with your right hand, press down outwards slightly so you get that curve on the top. If it's perfectly flat, when you go to cone up again, you're going to end up with a dip and a little volcano. So you're going to end up with a hole right down the middle. If that gets, gets trapped in there, then you're going to have problems later on, either with an air bubble trapped inside the wall of the body, uh, or it gets trapped at the bottom and it can explode or crack in the kiln. So begin to cone up your piece of clay. And at this point I only want a little bit of clay at the top, around about that size, like a small tangerine or a little doorknob. So centre it down ever so slightly and decide where you're going to take off piece of clay I'm just going to press my right finger in and I'm using my left hand to steady the piece of clay. Now just try and think of this piece of clay at the top as a very small piece of clay that's attached onto the wheel head so you're going to treat it exactly the same. I'm going to centre this piece of clay to make sure perfectly centred on the wheel so that when I do all the manoeuvres it's going to be on centre and it's going to fit properly. So centering a very small piece of clay can be really tricky so it's trying to get your hands around it. Using a, a really small piece of clay is just as difficult as using a really big piece of clay. So my left hand in and instead of using this part of my hand that I normally would do I'm going to use my fingers in there. So centering just to make sure that that little knob of clay it's perfectly centered and again you can see when I put my finger here that it's perfectly centered on the wheel. So what I'm going to do first of all is make this little knob part. So instead of pressing right down in the middle like I do when I'm making a cylinder or a bowl I'm going to go just to the side. So depending on the size of knob that you want I'm going to go about a centimeter to the side of clay and press down on that there and you can see I'm beginning to explode, expose a little mound of clay in the middle and that's what I'm going to use to draw up and make my little knob. So pressing down until this has been exposed and you can play around with the shape of it. You can either make it a flat handle or you can change the shape to make a little knob. It's, it's up to you what kind of shape you want. Think about the, the rest of the piece that you're going to be making and try and make it sympathetic so it fits in with your design. So I'm going to make sure that the stem of the knob is quite thin so that I can get my fingers underneath to pick it up easier when it's finished. So just tidy that up ever so slightly. That's halfway there. So what I'm going to do now is draw up the walls as if it was like a very little bowl and level it out slightly. So I've got this weight underneath here. I'm going to slow my wheel right down and pinching from below and above. My hands are connected at the thumb or the wrist again. 
and I'm not looking directly above it because I'm going to draw the walls up like I do when I make a bowl. So I'm going to look slightly to the right hand side. So pinching and drawing up towards my nose. Keeping it perfectly on center. Consolidate on that rim. And try and draw up a little bit more of the clay. So that's the way, that's the walls brought up. You can have it very recessed, so you could use it just like that, but I'm gonna flatten it out a bit, otherwise the lid is going to sit really deep into the recess that you make. So very carefully supporting on the underside and pressing down with my left hand on the inside, a bit like opening out a flat bowl. I'm going to put a little bit of water onto the lid and looking to the right hand side, press down with my left finger, supporting with my right. I'm going to keep doing this till I get that lid nicely flattened out. And you want to make sure that you take away any of the water that's left inside there. Otherwise, if the water sits in here, it's going to collect, it's going to make your clay really flabby, and this part is where your lid will collapse. And instead of being that shape, it'll drop down. So you want to make sure that you take away all the water that's been collected in there and as normally with a piece of chamois you want to just soften off that rim so to take it off the wheel it's a bit tricky but I'm gonna cut away underneath to expose an area so that I can get in there to take the piece off the wheel. Cutting right in with my tool. And what I'd normally do is take a piece of cotton and wrap it around and pull it. And it's a bit like a, a noose that tightens, and a bit like putting your string through and it just pulls it, but I haven't got any string. So I'm gonna use another technique, which is just pinching. So pinching at the bottom quite solidly and it just comes off with your fingers. And you put that down really carefully. Oops, so it sits. There, should be fine. Right, now you can treat the piece of clay that you've got left as you normally would do for a cylinder and a bowl. And I'm gonna make, some to that shape over there, just a little cylinder and show you how to make a gallery so that lid can recess into it. So, centering down. To make sure the whole clay has been centered, I'm gonna cone up again and center back down. Clean up my wheel head. Now pressing down with my thumb, right down, so I've got about a centimetre at the bottom and as usual drawing the clay out. So my finger in the middle, supporting with my left hand and draw the clay towards me. Consolidate and level off. And don't forget to keep compressing down the base. That's what you really want to concentrate on. So you get a nice shape to your base, but also so that it's very compressed, stopping any risk of any cracks. I'm gonna collar in. 
So the wheel's still going really fast at this moment. And as normal with my first collar, I'm just going to push over with the heel of my left hand. So push clay in the way. And then consolidate that rim. Slow the wheel down slightly. I'm going to start drawing up. And pinching from the bottom. Drawing up towards my nose. Consolidate and level off. Collar in by squeezing this time. I'm going to do another draw. So pinching with that knuckle, the first knuckle, pinching again and then drawing up straight towards my nose. sponge and a stick to get away any water that's on the inside. I'm just going to belly this cylinder out slightly. My left hand on the inside pushing, being supported by my right hand. and level off at the rim. You want to make sure that you've left a reasonable size on your rim so that when you come to put your gallery in, it's not too thin. Because if you've got too thin a rim and you've tried to press down onto the gallery, it's going to collapse. So you want a reasonable thickness on the, uh, the very rim of your piece. This is when we're going to use calipers and this is going to measure the top of your pot measuring it up this is one that I just threw this is one I threw earlier so I'm just going to measure the size of that which is the same as that one so that is how big my lid is and my lid wants to be able to fit inside and sit on the gallery in here so this is a little bit wide at the moment so I just need to draw this in ever so slightly just collar it in. Leveling it off and compressing, making sure you've got a good thickness on your rim. So this is about right. So I want to make my gallery round about here. So I'm going to use a flat ended tool. I'm going to support with my finger on the inside and then press down with a flat edge tool. So get my wheel going. And as you can see, my hands are locked again, always supported. You get a much better movement than trying to just do it freehand. So hand supported, left fingers underneath the rim and pressing down firmly but gently with the tool. And that's given me a nice little indent in there. I want to make sure it's nice and levelled off. Tidy it up so there's no sharp edges. I'm going to consolidate and compress the rim of my gallery. I'm going to make sure you've taken away all the water that's inside your pot as well. And what you would do at the moment is leave that to dry for a little while. You should be able to check that that's about the right size for my lid to go in. Oops, here's the one I made earlier. And that should fit in there perfectly. I'm not going to put it right in at the moment or it'll stick. Uh, what you want to do is put a piece of paper between the two of them when you're drying them and dry them together so that if there is any distortion, they're going to distort the same way, but the piece of paper is going to make sure that they don't stick together. But you want to leave that to dry till it's leather hard, and then you can uh, turn it properly as well. The fact that my rim, where my gallery sits, is a nice thickness too, it means that I'll be able to turn this upside down and turn it on this little gallery. Take your piece of chamois as you normally do, 
just to soften it off and tidy it. it means that when you come to glaze it it's going to take up a nice amount of glaze you can still work on the shape of your piece at the moment so if you're wanting to put more detail into it you can work with it but just make sure that you're not changing the shape of your piece and I'll show you how to do a little bit of slip decoration on this as well so I've just got some white slip at this point it's really easy to get nice bands of slip around the piece uh, rather than just trying to paint it on if you hold your hand when you're applying slip and put that onto the surface you get a really nice even application of the slip that you're using it's a nice way of doing banding lines or an easy way of getting some colour onto the whole piece and you build it up layer by oops layer by layer and as usual you will trim up your piece at the bottom so you want to take away any of the weight that's left down there This way you're going to have a nice little lidded jar. This little bit on the underside of your piece, you can turn that off later when your jar is leather hard and your lid is still leather hard and you can turn it upside down and use your lid, the gallery of your jar as a, a rest for your lid to sit in. Well, that's coming just a little bit. If you find that when you've been playing around with your piece it changes circumference you can just pull that back out again should fit back in there perfectly now. yeah that will fit in there perfectly uh, as I say let them dry together so that they're really nice homogenous and they dry at the same rate thank you